بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم we continue the explanation on عمده الاحكام the reference on ruling and in the this hadith عن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الفطرة خمس الختان والاستحداد وقص الشارب وتقليم الاظافر ونتف الابط ونتف الابط the translation of the meaning abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said five practices are characteristics of the fitra five practices are the characteristics of the fitra circumcision shaving the pubic hair cutting the mustaches short or trimming the mustaches clipping the nails and depilating the hair of the armpits or plucking the hair of the arm pits the subject of the hadith refers to the characteristics of fitra characteristics of fitra what is the meaning of fitra here this is the fitra the creation upon which these matters are liked and obviously they are liked with the sound fitra those who have sound fitra because the deviant fitra these matters are not considered So when we talk about the fitra here, this refers to the sound fitra. The sound fitra like these matters. And that they are considered to the sound fitra as matters of good. This narration came in the form al fitra to khams. The fitra the, are five, the characteristic fitra are five and in another narration khamsun min al fitra five are from fitra and this is important in another narration it came five are from fitra so this latter meaning indicates that there are others isn't it this indicates that there are others and this is what came in the hadith of Aisha in Sahih Muslim where Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said Ashrun min al-fitra ten are from the fitra qassu al-sharib trimming the mustache Ten are the acts according to fitra. Clipping the mustache. I'fa'u al-lihya. Letting the beard grow. Was-siwak. Using the tooth stick, the siwak. Was-tinshaqu al-ma' Snuffing water in the nose. Wa-qassu al-adhafir. Cutting the nails. وَغَسْلُ الْبَرَاجِمْ Washing the finger joints وَنَتْفُ الْإِبْتْ Shaving the pubic hair area or the armpit وَحَلْقُ الْعَانَ So plucking the hair under the armpits and shaving the pubes وَانْتِقَاسُ الْمَاءِ 
and cleaning one's private parts with water. The narrator said, وَنَسِيتُ العاشرة. I've forgotten, I have forgotten the tenth. إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَ الْمَضْمَضَ But it may have been rinsing the mouth. Now, so let's go with the first one, and that is the khitan, the circumcision. And the circumcision means قَطْعُ جِلْدَةِ الذكر التي فوق الحشفة حتى تبرز it means cutting uh, the glands which is the conical vascular body forming the extremity of the penis this is with respect to the male and with respect to the female as we will discuss and elaborate further later refers to trimming a skin piece which is part of the which is at the upper part of the private part above the area of penetration of the penis which is like a seed this is the meaning of khitan, of circumcision. As to men, it is an obligation. According to the correct opinion, it is obligatory. And in one hadith, which is authenticated by some of the scholars, that the Prophet ﷺ commanded those who accepted Islam to perform it. where he said alqi anka sha'ar al-kufri wakhtatin take off the hair of kufr your head hair of kufr which was symbolic way of their hair particular to the kafirs wakhtatin and then perform circumcision this is the point of evidence this hadith, there is difference of opinion on its authenticity, and some of the scholars authenticated it. Also, it is a distinction for the believers from the Jews and the Christians who do not generally circumcise. And some of them do not as a source of cleansing and purity but for sexual pleasure and also we know that destroying any part of one's body is forbidden But in this case, the fact that it is to be taken out, taking a piece of the body out, cannot be except due to it being an obligation. Also, this, if it is left, this piece of skin, if it is left, then it will be a cause for accumulation of filth. It will accumulate filth from urine and when the person now this is the vas I described it in uh, from an anato- anatomical perspective when we said that the conical vascular body which forms the uh, extremity of the penis the which you may refer to as the foreskin So with old age also, and the person reaches the stage of marriage, this will be problematic during the intercourse. So that's why it is from the act according to Fitra to circumcise and take out this foreskin. 
and as to when it's to be done with respect to the child it's to be done on the seventh day after birth and the sooner it is done the sooner it's done it's better because it does not cause too much pain during this age and even if some pain will occur it will be something physical on the body itself not on the heart as with respect to the person advanced in age if we circumcise someone who is 10 years of age then he will suffer both in his heart and in his body also the healing of the place after this circumcision is faster at an early age as to the circumcision with the with the female with the female it is not an obligation and many of the scholars consider it to be from the Sunnah based on the hadith of Umm Atiyah al-Ansariyya may Allah be pleased with her when she said that a woman a woman used to circumcise in Medina meaning other women so the Prophet ﷺ told her لا تنهكي فإن ذلك أحظى للمرأة وأحب إلى البعل Don't exceed the limits in taking this piece of skin which we described earlier فإن ذلك أحظى للمرأة Meaning don't exceed the limits take what is sufficient because this would be better for her pleasure وأحب إلى البعل and like to her husband this hadith is considered by Al-Hafidh bin Hajar rahimahullah as being supported by two narrations and he was referring to the fact that some scholars like Abu Dawood may Allah his mercy be upon him considered it weak al Hafiz bin Hajar said however it has two supporting evidences from the hadith of Anas and from hadith of Um Ayman and another from al dahhaq and al Sheikh Al-Albani rahimahullah said by way of its supporting narrations it can be elevated to the level of a Hassan hadith, a good hadith so it is Hassan by way of supporting other supporting narrations. The second characteristic of Fitra, according to Fitra, is Al Istihdad, shaving the pubic hair. And this is the rough hair which grows around the front p- private part and this is from the sign of puberty and it is an act according to Fitra that this should be shaved because if it stays long it may get filthy and a place of accumulation of filth and this would be harmful there are some people unfortunately that they leave this like animals even leaving it growing without touching them and it accumulates the filth and the sweat which comes from the lower belly 
and therefore taking this and shaving this is from purification the third one is qassu sharib cutting the moustaches short, trimming the moustaches short and this refers to the hair growing above the upper lip so anything that exceeds the upper lip is considered as a moustache so it's to be trimmed closely and cut closely because again this would be a place of filth from whatever emanates from the nose also uh, during drinking this may touch the water and then causes it to be filthy and it uh, may carry also some microbes and organisms nevertheless it is from the Sunnah we know. Most important thing that it is from the Sunnah and a means of nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we trim it closely. And the Prophet والسلام, said, Clip your mustaches and let your beards grow and oppose the people of the book. And also he وسلم, said, Khalifu al-Mushrikeen, Ufu al-Shawarib, oppose the mushriks the polytheists trim closely the mustaches and let the beards grow and also in another hadith the prophet sallallahu said juzzu al-shawarib wa arkhu al-liha wa khalifu al-majus juzzu means attain the utmost in trimming your mustache and let the beards grow and oppose the magians And this is reported by Sayyid Muslim. And the trimming covers only what extends above the lip. And it is not shaving the entire mustache. This is important. Because this would be against the practical and confirmed sunnah of the Prophet And that's why when Imam Malik rahimahullah, was asked about the one who shaves off his mustache, he said that he should be disciplined or to that meaning and also he said to someone who shaved his mustache this is a bid'ah innovation that is emerging amongst the people and the fourth act according to the fitra is qassu al-adhafir clipping the nails and this refers to the nails of the hands and the feet and one should not uh, clip them to the extent of reaching the skin because this would be harmful Rather, a medium course of clipping should be, should be sufficient. The fifth is plucking the or depleting the hairs of the armpits or plucking that. If in this case it is to, to be plucked because this takes it out entirely and weakens its roots however if it is hardship on the individual and difficult then in this case inshallah there is the removal of it by any means of shaving using creams and the like is permissible These are five methods mentioned in the hadith of Abi Huraira. The circumcision, the uh, shaving of the 
pubic hair, the trimming of the mustache, the clipping of the finger of the of the nails, and the plucking of the armpits. As to the circumcision, if done once. And here, one should point that some people are born circumcised, and this is witnessed. So therefore, in this case, this person is not to be circumcised. As to the other four, as to the other four, the istihdad, the shaving of the pubic hair and the trimming of the mustache and the clipping of the nails and plucking the armpits, these should not be left for more than 40 Days, because the Prophet ﷺ timed that that these should not be left more than forty days. So they, therefore, there is a time limit on this. And this hadith is the hadith of Anas bin Malik, which is reported in Sahih Muslim. And the best thing as to how one can be aware of the proper timing is that you say for example my first Friday will be from each month that I will do this so that you don't forget because the person may forget and exceed the 40 days and sometimes 50 days and sometimes does not remember so but some, when you specify a certain day like saying okay the first Friday of each month, I will take these four things. Then in this case, you know the time. And what is mentioned here is not as a sunnah, but just as a regulation. So that you don't exceed the 40 limits. Now the hadith of Aisha, where she mentioned the 10, <clears throat> so she mentioned ten some of which were mentioned in the hadith of Abi Huraira we were discussing now and some were not mentioned from that is letting the beards grow this is from the fitra and from the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu the Prophet sallallahu commanded to let the beards grow. And this is from uh, signs, this is a beauty and a sign of masculinism as well. And anyone who shaves the beard, then in this case, he opposes the way of the Prophet والسلام, and disobeys him. And then he will fall into the resemblance of the mushriks and the Magians. As you remember the hadith we mentioned earlier oppose the Magians and the Mushriks and let the beards grow and trim the moustache you see Muslims did not know of this habit of shaving the beards but after colonization by the Kafirs to many of the Muslim lands in Egypt and in Asham, greater Syria and Iraq and others they introduced this bad habit of shaving the beards and people became careless. In fact, many of those who have the, their beards grown are disliked and thought to be or labeled to be reactionary and so forth. So shaving, there is no doubt that this is a disobedience to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and anyone who disobeys the Messenger disobeys Allah and anyone who obeys the Messenger obeys Allah. And the duty upon the Muslim is to give advice and clarify the truth concerning this matter and any other matter. And as to keeping away and making hajr legal 
boycott of a person who may shave his beards, if such an action assists, assists him in stopping his shaving of his beard, then it is prescribed. But if it is of no benefit, or rather it will increase him in his action, then he should not be boycotted. Because this matter is a cure, is a medicine. It's used when it is beneficial. And if it's not beneficial, then in origin it is prohibited to make hajr of the mu'min, of the believer, to boycott the believer and stay away from him. What's mentioned in this hadith is the matter of istinshaq, snuffing the water in the nose. This is from the, from the fitra because this is cleaning and cleansing the nose. So it's a purification. And this takes place in wudu and outside wudu. Whenever the nose is needed to be cleaned, then you take some water and you snuff it through. And this differs with people. Some people may need this outside the wudu, and some it is sufficient during the wudu. And also from the sunnah of fitra, the acts according to the fitra is rinsing the mouth because this cleans the mouth and the mouth needs to be cleaned because it accumulates food and uh, fat and the like and from this is also the istinja cleaning one's private parts with water Because this is a purification and removal of filth as well. And from this is the washing the finger joints, which nucleus. Now, in this hadith, also there is the siwak, of course. And we spoke about this in. Hadith which came before this one. In this hadith, in this hadith, we are ordered to let the beard grow. And this is in addition of being from the acts according to the fitra, it is in opposition to the mushriks. Now, if someone says that there are from the kuffar nowadays, who grow their beards. So shouldn't we oppose them now and shave our beards? Just think of this. This is from Shaitan. In response, the answer would be, their letting of their beards grow is, in origin, it is the fitra. In origin. And we are commanded to take the acts of fitra. And if they resemble us in this, so we don't prevent them. And we should not change or deviate from the fitra because they are in agreement with us on it. The same argument holds true if they are in agreement with us concerning the clipping of the nails. So we shouldn't say therefore we oppose them and then we hold and refrain from trimming the nails. Similarly, according to all the acts of the uh, clipping the nails. Similarly, it's with the other acts of fitra. 
if the kuffars are in agreement with us, then we don't relinquish them. It's worth noting that the mushriks, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, grew beards. Because the Arabs did not change this beauty, neither prior to or after the revelation came down to the Prophet ﷺ. In fact, Islam acknowledged this quality of the mushriks. The Arabs may have continued to practice this quality following the way, the sunnah of Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Westerners continued to grow their beards until Peter, the king of Russia, spread the act of beard shaving in Europe at the beginning of the 7th century. Later, many Muslims were influenced by this bad Western habit during the times of colonization, as mentioned earlier. As for how the Muslims opposed the mushriks who grew their beards at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it was done by trimming what extended on the lips from the mustache. Whenever the mushriks would shorten their beards, the Muslims opposed them by letting their beards fully grow. This brings the end of the discussion on these two narrations which are related. The hadith of Abi Huraira and the hadith of Aisha. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.